My name is Dr. Pran Yoganathan. I'm a Sydney-based uh, gastroenterologist and hepatologist. Our specialty encompasses the human gastrointestinal tract um, in, and, and our digestive system. Um, I suppose with, with my medical specialty, it's very relevant that we talk on um, aspects of nutrition as we often see the byproduct of uh, poor, poor nutritional choices um, uh, in, 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 in society uh, manifesting its way through, through digestive diseases. Um, so we've taken on a very um, holistic, integrative approach where um, our practice looks at a person from a, a nutritional standpoint, and we look to, to modify lifestyle uh, based on, on the individual's requirement. Um, so it, it, we, we are, uh, you, you would think that this should be a commonplace practice where digestive doctors are looking at nutrition, but it, it isn't. It's made us unique in some respects, uh, but the work has been enjoyable and I hope that we're making some positive changes in, in people's lives. It's a little bit about my, um, my background. very much evolved for us or for me uh, in particular medical school uh, I mean you know there's a lot of doctors that say nutrition isn't taught nutrition was taught um, I think it was a week-long uh, module few hours per day on that um, but but when you think about how how enormous um, the impact of poor nutrition is on ill health um, you would you would think the focus would have been much more nuanced much more much more broader. And uh, when, when you look back in retrospect, a lot of the um, topics that were taught um, in, in medical school was the classic fallacies of you know, low fat diets, low meat or low protein diets and um, focus on carbohydrates and the grains, which we now know is not perfect advice, is far from perfect advice. Um, but once you get into gastroenterology training as, an, uh, as, a, um, uh, as a senior doctor, uh, with a view to becoming a specialist, the three years are spent fundamentally doing, doing scope-based work. Um, we do do clinic work where we see things like irritable bowel uh, syndrome, but a lot of times that link with diet isn't made, or even if it is, it's often just referred on to a dietitian as in go and see a dietitian. And, you know, we, we know that that's not perfect either. We know up until a few years ago, there was some quite open relationships with um with various uh, food manufacturers such as Kellogg's and Nestle and 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 whatnot that the Dietitians Association of Australia did have, so it it um, I I think as a doctor I've come to the conclusion that we should be dealing with it. We should be tackling it head on, and and we should have a excellent understanding of nutrition. Um, it's the doctors of the future um, or, or, or the way the doctors of the future will practice, uh, Tracy, but unfortunately not commonplace yet. It's a good question. When you're in your 20s, perhaps, you take health for, for granted. You know what I mean? Like your reproductive hormones, your androgens, all of these are firing from a nature perspective just at their highest levels, for most people anyway, I can't speak for everyone. Um, when that occurs, there's just a lot of damage that your body can put up with. And, you know, uh, you go through your 20s and you think you're indestructible, but but things change, you know, once you sort of hit your 30s and then beyond that. And I certainly found that out for myself in my mid-30s I just found that despite the fact that I was trying to follow a, um, a, a, a diet that I was taught to follow, which was high in grains, vegetables, and very low in meat-based foods um, or animal-based foods, my, my, my health was deteriorating. I developed a, some sort of inflammatory um, bursitis involving my left elbow. I had put on weight. I just didn't have the same energy um, that I did. I just didn't feel generally generally good but I, I got through my day I got through my day with with having multiple uh, sugar breaks to keep the uh, dopamine levels high uh, as those dipped you tend to follow it up with a coffee I was, I was I was kind of doing all these things to keep myself awake which a lot of doctors do I mean you, you'd, you'd be surprised if you if you knew how many coffees some some medical doctors get through and I think 
a lot of that just un, it just reveals how how the baseline level of health is poor. So for me, when you say what did it what, what does it mean to recover more or, or what does it mean to be healthy? When I changed my lifestyle and there's various methods employed to do that, we, we can talk about that a bit later. But when you change your lifestyle, the first thing that, that really improves um, is the mental clarity. And a lot of people on these low carbohydrate diets where they're not getting these wild sugar swings often will speak to that. They will say mental clarity is a, a, a very pronounced aspect or a side effect of the diet, an excellent side effect. So once that comes into, into place, once you've got mental clarity, I think you really start focusing your energy on how you're going to get your life organized, whether that's um, you know exercise or, or from a social or an economic perspective. There's there's many ways in what in in in, in which people get their lives organized, but but um, I think it just gives you clarity clarity to to to, to be able to see through all the the chaos of the modern world, so you can better position yourself to to tackle that. There's no doubt about that, Tracy. Um, yeah, that, that was a general statement that potentially applies to maybe our generation, right? Um, but no longer. I think we're starting to see an enormous burden of mental, physical illness in, in our teenagers, in, in our young adults. It's happening um, earlier and earlier. I'll, I'll give you an example, um, and I'm not implicating glyphosate here. I think there's many, many um, environmental triggers here. But there was an experiment where they took a colony of rats and the first generation of rats were, were given copious amounts of this horrible uh, pesticide, which is Roundup, okay, in their food. The second generation weren't. They weren't exposed at all. And the third generation weren't either. They were just fed normally. What was really interesting was the second generation was sicker than the generation that had received the uh, Roundup, but the sickest generation was the third generation. OK, so it, it just shows you a lot of these environmental triggers and I'm using just Roundup and rats as an example, uh, often intergenerational. OK, and it, it, it really it carries on through the generation. So the decisions that we're making now affect our grandkids in the future. And uh, I think we're starting to see uh, decisions that were made 30, 40 years ago starting to unfortunately impact our young adults, and I think chemical-based agriculture is uh, one of the major um, uh, precipitants in, in, in that. It's really simple, and I think one of the one of the things about nutrition is the concept, and, and it's a Frederick Nietzsche quote. I love I love it, and it applies to nutrition. Is, is they muddied the waters to make it seem big. Okay. Nutrition is not difficult. Nutrition is, is not difficult. Let's relate it back to lifestyle. I think the first top tip, you got to sleep well, okay? Sleep's important. If, if, if you're consuming huge amounts of coffee and chocolates or sweets or whatever, desserts up at 3 a.m. In, in the morning watching Netflix and then waking up at 6 a.m. the next day, you're not going to make great lifestyle choices the next day. Like, you know, so that, that's very basic. Sleep is critical. We must get sleep right, okay? The second thing is smoking. I mean, we know smoking and vaping are absolutely, the, these, are, these are things that ruin your health. That's not worthwhile. And the third thing is alcohol. So if we can get those three basic things out of the way, um, now we can focus a little bit more on, on nutrition or nutritional choices. In nutrition, there are three macronutrients. There is protein, which are um, fundamentally amino acids. These are the building blocks of life. There is fat, which is a fuel, but fat can also bring with it nutrients. And there's carbohydrates. It's a fuel. It can also bring with it nutrients. The problem that we've got in the modern world is that we've got a paucity of protein, whether that is animal sourced or plant-based, but we've got an excess of refined fats and refined carbohydrates, often a combination of both. So something like a donut or an ice cream, which is hyper palatable food, which, uh, people love that, is, is, is a combination of fat. It's probably 50-50 actually, a combination of fat and carbohydrate. It's a fuel. It is a supercharging, um, it's a supercharged fuel source 
which has to lead to something called mitochondrial dysfunction. It's a complex um, topic, but you're essentially delivering far too much energy to your body, okay? And in addition to that, because we live in 2022 and not 1822, we are far more sedentary. There, are, there is far more use of uh, vehicles. We've got more public transport. Uh, we've got shopping trolleys where we didn't have to sort of carry shopping before. It's just everything is re revolves around a life that is made simple for, for us human beings. But the, the, the difficulty and the thing that we must remember is we, we're evolved in a way where we're not built for comfort. We, we, the body isn't built for comfort. We're, we're built to, to, to do things with our body. We're, we're built to move. We're built to lift. We're built to, to carry things. So it is important that if your energy output, like the output that you have in a day is low, which for most of us it is, then you've got to be really cautious about the energy going in. And remember what I said about diet. It is very simple. Protein, fat, carbohydrate. You just have to learn to control the energy portions that go in, which, which in this case I'm talking about refined fat and refined carbohydrate. Protein is a very interesting macronutrient. It is not a fuel. It can be used as a fuel, but the body doesn't necessarily do that with ease. It doesn't like using it as, um, as a fuel. It is a building block. It is what we fundamentally are built off, our hair, our bone, our nails, um, our gut. Um, it, 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 it is built of amino acids. So protein fundamentally constitutes turnover. People think we're born and, and, and that's it. We grow and we remain static. It doesn't work like that. Our body is extremely dynamic. It's turning over cells in our skin, in our gut. We're losing the stuff and we have to eat to re-add these building blocks in. Otherwise, if that doesn't occur, it often happens um, at our detriment because our appetites stay high. If you're not getting enough protein in a day, you often tend to crave foods regularly. So people end up having five, six smaller meals and often these are high fat, high carbohydrate uh, type meals, uh, often refined and um, and the other thing that tends to happen is your bone and muscle are reservoirs for amino acids. These are pools of amino acid, and your body sometimes has to call on these reserves um, to, to be able to satisfy that. So take someone who's morbidly overweight. If you were theoretically going to put them on a diet that was fasting, extended fast or, or starvation with just water to keep them alive, water and electrolytes, they would lose fat but it is important to remember they would also lose muscle, okay? So because these things get turned over and if you're not providing these amino acids, uh, these are lost. So the key aspect of health is retaining as much muscle as possible, not for aesthetic reasons, not because it looks good. It's for two reasons. It is a, it is a organ um, probably very, very closely involved with how we, how we regulate um, sugars and fats in our body. Additionally, it's a method of locomotion. It, these muscles in our upper and lower bodies allow us to move from point A to point B, allow us to lift from point A to point B. So it allows us to exercise. And remember, I said exercise is a critical cool part of uh, being a human being. It, it all comes back full circle. So that's nutrition in a nutshell. Um, Tracy, you just got to strip it down through to, to the three um, macronutrients and look to emphasize protein. Often protein sources, especially animal sourced proteins will come with fats, right? That's a natural part of being a uh, animal source foods that fats generally will come with this. Um, and carbohydrates are not the demon. They're not a problem, but you just got to focus on carbohydrates that are not refined. There's a big difference between um, carbohydrate from um carbohydrate from a plant versus carbohydrate that's just like white pasta or or, or white bread or, or, you know, cereals that are packed with sugar. We just got to be smart about our carbohydrate choices. The, the thing that brings me joy, um, Tracy, in, in, in life is the ability to be able-bodied. Um, I enjoy weight training because you can set, set yourself a target and you can see this target improve week by week. Generally speaking, sometimes you have bad weeks, um, but 
it, it, everything that you do in the gym, gym tends to translate to how you move in life. I played touch footy with my three uh, young kids yesterday and, and I really enjoyed it. We played for about 30 to 45 minutes. It, it really brought me a lot of joy. But I thought to myself, there, there are a lot of 41-year-olds that can't move the way I'm moving. And it's not that I'm genetically blessed. I, I would argue that I'm not. I was never had an athletic tendency. I'm like, my, my, I come from a long lineage of men that, that have terrible type 2 diabetes and heart disease. But I was able to move. I was able to play with them. I was able to stay mentally sharp. Um, I sledged them mercilessly for about 30 minutes as well. Um, and, and, and all of these things to me mean a lot. It's just the work that you put in to your health kind of really pays off with how you are able to view life, right? Your, your senses are just so much sharper. And I think your experience of life, however long that may be for the, the for me, I might have another 40 years or whatever. I just think I'll be able to view it in a way that that is ideal. Now, um, that that's, that, that's why I want to be healthy, Trace. It's, it's just so I can kind of serve myself, my patients and my family well. Tracy, I think people are existing in a very tumultuous period of um, humanity's chapter. Um, I think there are some there are some very perverse forces at play that are influencing the dietary choices of human beings. Um, I think for the last forty years, it has certainly been evident that that red meat has been vilified it's been linked to bowel cancer even though the links have been very tenuous at best eggs have been told to be causing heart disease butter is the same and people have been conditioned for 40 years but largely it has been left up to them it's been voluntary right like you choose whether you want to have that steak or not but it's going to cause you bowel cancer so people just most people are sensible most people want to be healthy over time people have reduced their intake of that but now we see some very, very sinister forces that suggest that we shouldn't eat animal-based protein because it's it's potentially causing destruction of, of habitats that are leading to climate change. And um, and, and now I, f I fear a situation whereby it's going to be conditioned into our schools. I think it'll be part of the curriculum. I think we will be taught that cows cause climate change and as a result we should no longer consume red meat or beef um, or lamb or, or whatever it is um, and, and I think we're they're also simultaneously rolling out alternative protein sources like insect protein and and um, and and plant-based meats and so forth so th there are some sinister forces at play I, I'd be I'd be lying if I what, if, I, if I said it's going to be easy for people because there are significant political, economic, because beef is inflated by 40%, and also social, cultural forces that are really going to push people away from eating a nutritious diet, which in my, in my belief should include animal source foods. I think that is a critical part of our diet. And remember, the same people telling you all of this are the same people that won't bat an eyelid to, to tell you that we've got a kangaroo pest problem in Australia. There's, there's a huge number of pests that are that are problematic. Deer, goat, kangaroos, camels, brumbies, and these are all edible protein sources, you know, and, and yet we're being told that we must deviate away from that and eat a processed plant burger meat, you know, which is full of absolute processed rubbish. So I fear for our population, and I'm, I'm going to be very forthright about that. I don't think it is, is, is as easy as just eat low carb and you'll be fine. There'll be significant uh, pressures against you. I think there'll be friends and families that will turn away from you for your dietary choices. You have to stay strong and you have to be well read and you have to be equipped with all the information so you can question uh, some of these bodies that are producing what is fundamentally top-down governance uh, to, to socially engineer uh, the population.